and this is just the introduction to Showdown Legends of Wrestling. I think it's one of the better video games that's come out for wrestling in a while, and I haven't done a video game review in a very long time. So why pick this one when it's almost five years old? Well, I was looking around and I saw a review done by somebody who gave this a F rating and just really trashed the game. So I was going to do a video that shows the other side because this is a game that if you're a real wrestling fan, you should have it in your collection if you don't. First off, it's a real easy game to pick up and learn. You go to the extras, you're going to learn how to wrestle by none other than Bret the Hitman Hart. And who better to teach you how to get in the ring than the excellence of execution? Brett gives you all the move sets, shows you how to make things happen, talks you through every step of the way. Now, one of the things you'll probably notice right off the bat is that these wrestlers look a little bit like a blown-up cartoon. This game was designed more as an arcade style. There's a limited move set, but that's a good thing, because again, all of these are legends. They didn't have half the moves that exist nowadays. Guys weren't doing the planches and, and all kinds of hurricane ranas off the top rope. So it's not in this game because it wouldn't be realistic for the time periods. This game has more than its fair share of options on how to play. One of those is a quick play setting. You can do is just basically set a quick play, which means you'll put in what type of match you want it to be, and it'll be that match every time you go to quick play. And you can choose the arena, and we'll get to that. Look at these arenas. They have used names, locations, they've recaptured them in great detail. You got the Pontiac, the Wembley, Madison Square Garden, the Omni, Tokyo Dome, Texas Stadium, the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the good old days, Moscow, the Kobo Arena, Legends Coliseum, which is actually a pretty cool arena that they came up with, uh, the Sky Dome, I think there was a pretty big match there once, Dory Funk's gym, you'll train in that, the Mid-South Coliseum, I mean there truly is something for everyone. Every wrestler has four different outfits, and that pretty much covers every aspect of their career. Uh, I'll give you an example, Ricky the Dragon, if you use him in his latter days as the Dragon with the WWF, he comes out with the full headdress on, he does the fire spitting into the air. I, I mean, they don't miss a trick. George Animal steel tears open the turnbuckle and throws the stuffing around. All the little nuances that made this one of the most interesting eras in professional wrestling, definitely most colorful, is all there. Now, one of the things this guy trashed was the commentary. You've got Tony Schiavone, you've got uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and Larry Zabisco. Now, Bobby Heenan was coming off a of throat surgery, so yeah, he didn't sound quite right. But the thing he doesn't mention about the commentary is how they go into the history of the sport. Every time one of the wrestlers you choose is in the ring, they will talk about some of his biggest grudge matches and some of his biggest opponents. So there's a lot of learning to be done in this game. The problem is, you know, he made one comment in particular. It didn't sit well with me. He says, you'll only appreciate this game if you're over 40 years old. Well, you might only remember these guys as being in the ring if you were over 40 years old. But I'll tell you what, when I was a kid and Hulkamania was running strong, they put out some videos over at the local Walmart. They were only about five bucks a piece, black and white, which was old, old wrestling, gorgeous George days and things like that, Antonio Rocca. Now, I knew nothing about these guys. I knew their names. I'd heard of them. I went and bought the videos because I wanted to be a student of the game. I wanted to learn more about it. And that's what this game is great at. This game will give you a lot of background talk to you about a lot of different things, matches that have happened, and things like that. So it's not only fun, it's also educational if you want to learn more about the history of the sport. So for anyone who wants to turn around and make a stupid remark like that, you're not a real wrestling fan, so it really doesn't matter. Alright, let's get to the actual gameplay just a little bit. Here we are in Madison Square Garden, and they have really captured the whole look and feel of the building, I think, really well. We got Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, who I personally cannot stand, and that's just because I've had the chance to meet him on two occasions, and he's been a jerk both times. So I thought it'd be fun to put him in the ring and kick his ass a little bit. Now, here's my only ma two major drawbacks I have. Number one is there is no championship belt whatsoever to be had. Number two, you cannot simulate matches. You have to play at least one player. Other than that, it is what it is. I mean, he says that the, the controls are non-responsive. I didn't find them to be non-responsive. Maybe he has no talent, no skill, and no timing. Um, they work fine. I mean, sometimes you win a battle and sometimes you lose. That's just the way it is. 
Here we see Diamond Dallas getting ready to do something to Scotty. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. The diamond cutter on old Scott. So these introductions are really great. Now, one of the other options they have is the Showdown Classic, where it's kind of like the old Madden. They put you in a historic moment, and you have to basically relive it and try and recapture it. So here's Hogan in the camel clutch breaking out, and now you got to go and beat the Iron Sheik, which a few seconds later, here comes a big leg drop, and I think we all know what happens after that. They've done another great job, and he gave me credit for this, uh, with the music. They couldn't get the rights and royalties to it, but they did manage to capture it anyway. It's still really close to the real thing. You'll understand what it is. Everyone wants to know about claw modes anytime you get a wrestling game, so here's theirs. He throws it under the bus completely, saying that you'll end up with a crappy claw that you'll never want to use again. So I said, all right, well, let's put it to the test. I hadn't made a claw for this game, uh, so I had first time trying it. And I decided we're going to make an Undertaker. Now, they've got a lot of things in this game that you'll learn as you go through the, the claw mode that were clearly designed with uh, name wrestlers in mind. So here we are going with the Undertaker. And uh, the, the hair comes out a little bit on the blue side in this one because I didn't push it to the right side, which I've fixed since the video. One of his other things was he says blonde hair and brown hair, are, and I think black hair, are the most common and you can't get them in this game. Well, I'm here showing you, yeah, you can. You gotta be a little smarter, that's all. You just gotta know how to push the right buttons. So here you see a lot of the options and the things, Nasty Boy costumes, we just saw Harlem Heat right there. They're not in the game, but you can make them. And that's the whole thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here that's clearly there to be made uh, with names, superstars in mind. So right now we're working on The Undertaker, who coincidentally, they have a shirt for The Undertaker. So even though he wasn't in the game, it's real easy to make one. Now we're going to get down here in a second, and you're going to see the tattoos. Uh, obviously, they, they don't have a wide selection, but it's enough to give you the overall feel. Uh, the shoes, they've got a huge variety of shoes there, and one of them happens to be Undertaker's. And that brings you to the movesets. There's quite a few moves. I mean, it's not like when I say it's limited, it's not that bad. Here he is going against Abdullah, which, by the way, this is the greatest rendition of Abdullah the Butcher in any video game I've ever seen. They really captured him. I don't know that Undertaker would ever give him the last ride to hell, uh, but what the heck. Like I said, his hair turned a little bit purple here, but I fixed it afterwards. Hey, he gave it an F. I give it a C plus. On a scale of 1 to 10, 7.2. I recommend this game.